Okay, let's do this. So this week I'm gonna make you an introduction to the databases of your game and also how you can create actors and classes for your RPG. Well, let's get started. So at the top of your screen on your toolbar, you got this button over here which gives you access to your database. If you click on it, you will be able to see that you have access to all the actors, the skills of your game, the items, weapons, enemies, states, whatever it is. Everything is stored in there and it's up to you to configure everything on how you exactly need it to make the RPG you want. So today, we're only gonna cover the two top tabs which is actors and also classes and how you can configure those to be able to create exactly what you need. Okay, so by default you have eight actors already created inside your project which are default characters created by RPG Maker MZ. Now, if you'd like to have more characters or simply like to delete those to create your own, there's two possibilities you can do here. First, you have the button at the bottom here, which is change the maximum. So you can go to something like 500 and from here you're able to create up to 500 playable characters. You can even go, I think, much farther than that. I think the limit is like 2000, something like that. 1000, okay. So you can create up to 1000 playable character inside the database. I doubt anyone at home watching this will ever need more than this. I don't think like 100 is overkill, but maybe something like 20 is kind of considerable. Alright, so now that you've changed the maximum, you can either like click on an empty ID, which from there you'll be able to configure everything you need, or you can simply go ahead and right click on the, any one that you like and just click on clear or use the delete button on your keyboard to be able to clear out all the data and start from scratch. Now in our case, we're simply gonna go over what are the parameters that you can configure and what they are exactly. So first you have the name of your character, you have the nickname of said character which will only show up inside the status of the character inside the menu, so it's not really useful. Now you can select the class of said character. Initial level is the level at which the character begins, the maximum is the maximum achievable inside the game, and I think it's blocked at 99, so it cannot go higher than this. Now the profile is also a text that will show up only inside the status of the character, so maybe like give it a cute little background story or whatever you want it to be. So it's not mandatory, but if you'd like to give more information about the character to the players when they play in the game, that's what it's for. Also you have the graphics of the character, so first you have the faces that you can change by double clicking, same for the character, and the battler in combat, which you can generate all your own inside the character generator. Now, for the interesting part, we have the initial equipment. So basically, what is the gear that your character is going to start with? So in our case, we have only a longsword and a leather vest. But if you double click on it, you can come over here and change to whatever are the possibilities. Something to take into account is that the possible equipment that is shown here does not represent all the weapons inside your database. This is only the weapons that this character can equip because of its class. So we'll see in a moment how we can adjust this. Also, by default, there's only five types of equipment. Should you want more or create different ones than the one available here, you can go inside the types and from here you will have the column over here that says equipment types and you can also change the maximum. So let's say, let's go with eight and you could simply like create, okay, uh, accessory two. And like, let's say, um, I don't know, a belt and whatnot, like maybe an amulet like, or whatever, like whatever you need it to. And then if I click on apply, go back to my hackers, as you can see, all the new type of equipment has been ap just appeared and it's up to me to also initiate those. In our case here, I don't want to like change this, but if you'd like, that's it. this is how you can do it. Now for the last section of the actors category, is called traits, which are specific parameters that can only apply for this specific actor. So there's a whole bunch of possibility that you can apply as parameters that will only affect this actor. But to give you a quick example, if we go under the rate section and the element rate, basically if you over the specific parameter, you'll see that what it does is that it changes the damage multiplier according to the specific element. So to give you an example, 
if I click on fire over here and I say 50% I click on OK that means that the element rate of the element fire is reduced to 50% for that character so that means that any fire damage that the actor read receives from now on inside my game deals only 50% of what it will have done normally because read has a 50% element rate on fire if I was to choose 200% instead that means that the fire damage you will receive will be doubled now moving on to the classes sections so as you can see it has a similar layout as the actors what is different with classes first the experience curve the experience curve is determined not by the actor but by the class that means that the amount of experience the character needs to reach the specific level let's say that from level one to level two it is a total of 50 experience points now you can adjust the amount of experience that the character needs by adjusting those bars over here next we have the parameter curves which reflects the maximum hit points mana points the attack defense magical attack magical defense agility and luck of our character something that i do not like with parameters inside rpg meter mz is the descriptions because as you can see here the attack power says that it affects the amount of damage dealt to opponents that is bullshit okay while this is true in a sense in a way that by default yes it will it's not actually determined by the editor it's up to you to decide what those parameter does if for instance you would like to make a skill that uses the defense score of one of your characters to determine how much damage it does you can do it and so that's not true that the attack is what determines the attack power you can change it for defense for luck agility magical defense even i mean even if that won't make sense you can do it and so the descriptions here are just total garbage the only thing really that stick with you that you need to know about the parameters is that well you have the maximum hit points you have the magic points or mana points whatever you want to call it the attack defense magical attack and magical defense are entirely dependent on how you configure skills inside your games while the agility is kind of true that the higher your agility the better chances that your character will act first or act faster depending on the combat style that you want to engage with inside RPG Maker MZ. There's different types of combats that you can have inside RPG Maker MZ, so that's up to you to decide which one fits your game best. And luck, by default, the only thing that it affects is the chances to apply states or being affected by states inside the game. Now, for the learnable skills, all you need to do is double click to add a new one, then you decide at which level the character will learn that skill. You say the skill you want to learn for that specific class, and there you go, you're done. So basically for swordsman, these are the default skills. At level 2 it learns strong attack, level 5 it learns slash, and so on and so on. And that's the same for every single class over here that you see. Now keep in mind that if your character was to change classes inside the game, so go let's say from a swordman to a sorcerer, then let's say he was level 12 when he did, he will forget all those four skills like strong attack, slash, willpower, and first aid will be forgotten entirely by the character and will give place to the fire steel, sleep, flame, spell and enhancement, fire 2 and silence of the sorcerer steels. So really the list of steels available to your character depends on the class he has and the current level that he's at. There's also traits available for your specific classes so the same as the actors we previously saw can also affect the specific class in question so that means that it doesn't matter who it is that has the class if he is for instance a sorcerer that means that those traits apply it doesn't matter which actor is having so also keep in mind that these are cumulative to the traits that the actor has so that means that if the class for instance has a critical rate that gives four percent chances to do a critical and your actor Halbert, which is also a sorcerer, would have the trait that also increases its chance by 4% to score a critical. That means that the total chances for Halbert to do criticals will be 4 because of the actor Halbert, 
but also plus four because of his class sorcerer. Just keep in mind that it doesn't override the traits, but they are cumulative. Okay, so that's it for today's video on hackers and classes inside the database and how you can configure those. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave some comments, whatever, and I will see you later for another video. Bye! Okay, bye!